In popular culture, Vincent van Gogh is often seen as the archetypal mad crazed artist. And although he did have extreme manic episodes, most of the time he was lucid and rational. Vincent was incredibly intelligent and well-read. He was so knowledgeable about art and artists. He was articulate and spoke four languages. He also had lifelong friends who he met or wrote to regularly, but he struggled to understand his place in the world. After a particularly difficult period living with Paul Gauguin, he suffered an attack of acute mania, culminating in hallucinations and hearing voices, which led to him cutting off his own ear. The doctors at the asylum diagnosed epilepsy. In all probability, he also had what today we call bipolar, with manic episodes and auditory hallucinations, as well as syphilis. He called his fellow patients his companions in misfortune, and recent discoveries show us that Vincent was probably the sanest patient at San Remy. Overall, the asylum had a positive effect on him, and he was well enough to paint about 75% of the time. Isolation turned out to be good for him, and with no outside distractions, Vincent, always a hard worker, would channel all his energies into his work. When we think of 19th century asylums, we think of them as horrific institutions. But the founder of San Remy Asylum was a progressive who believed that being surrounded by nature was good for troubled minds. He also believed in the healing power of art and music. Of course, it was not easy for Vincent, and he suffered manic attacks when he was unable to paint. But it could have been a lot worse. His brother Teo, who was paying for the treatment, insisted that the asylum allow Vincent to paint. In this highly charged picture, he would create in paint something we cannot see or touch, something immaterial. He would use paint to show a sky that is electric, which is how we imagine the night sky to be. This is a critical time for art, when artists are shifting from the narrative to expressing themselves with new ways of seeing. Vincent's work is paving the way for modern art. If we look at a modern image of the Whirlpool Galaxy, it bears a striking resemblance to Vincent's stars. But could he have known about spiral galaxies back in 1889? This drawing, made by the English astronomer Lord Ross in 1850, was reproduced as an etching in a French astronomy book, which had caused a sensation. Vincent, who was passionate about astronomy, had even met the author in Paris. The white band hanging over the hills is almost certainly the morning mist. By the time he painted the starry night, he was allowed out to explore the area alone and it was on one of these walks he drew this bird's eye view of the village. Like all great paintings, The Starry Night has been interpreted in many ways, notably concerning his religious beliefs. Although Vincent became an evangelical preacher in his twenties, he later rejected Christianity. But when Vincent lost his faith, he transferred many of his ideas into his art. Hard work and the appreciation of nature were seen as part of the worship of God in the Protestant tradition in which he was raised. His art had always emphasized the changing and renewing power of the seasons, and there was no harder working artist than Vincent. In less than a decade, he created about 2,100 artworks, including around 860 oil paintings most of which date from the last two years of his life. He spoke of art as a new kind of religion, a way to console people, and the Starry Night in particular reflected these beliefs. Nature for him was a source of the infinite, and the stars had a deep spiritual meaning. Stars that must have comforted Vincent as he gazed at the night sky from his cell. Vincent van Gogh would dismiss his most famous painting as a failure, and maybe, if he lived longer, he would have painted over it, as he did with so many of his paintings he considered failures. He was released from the asylum and he moved to the village of Auvers, 20 kilometers north of Paris. And two months later, he shot himself. It took Vincent 36 hours to die, which meant Theo, the brother who supported him, both financially and emotionally, was at his side when he died. 
Teo himself was to die just six months after Vincent. It is a myth that Vincent was unrecognized in his lifetime. He was already considered an important artist by his peers. His work had been shown in an exhibition in Brussels alongside Toulouse-Lautrec, Cezanne and Renoir. The Red Vineyard had sold for the decent sum of 400 francs. A major art critic had just published an article on him and only two months before his death, 10 of his works went on display in a major show in Paris, attended by the President of France. Vincent van Gogh was on the verge of success and may have killed himself at the very moment he was going to become what he had always wanted.